Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Opportunistic Trader. It's just after one o'clock on uh, November 20th, and uh, we got an active day here. S&P down 1.6%, NASDAQ down 1.6%. Uh, we're now joined by Tom McEntee. Uh, Tom's been taking us through equity, risk reward opportunities, looking uh, you know, for different ways to um, look for uh, great risk reward opportunities in the equity and options market. Uh, Tom, how's it going? Very good, Mike. How are you making out? Yeah, pretty well. Looking forward to Thanksgiving, to be honest. Yeah, as am I. As am I. It's uh, been a wild couple of days. Like, I never thought we'd get this kind of volatility this week i mean this is reminiscent of uh you know the bush uh bush gore what am i trying to think of yeah al gore the hanging chads what is that that's bush gore right yeah that okay. was yeah the hanging chads in 2000 i remember that i was trading cues and uh i went home a little short at the end of the day on friday the day it was the day after thanksgiving i believe uh -huh. and uh didn't want to just thought market on clothes stuff got me short and um couldn't get my, you know, I tried to, I scrambled and got some of my hedge off in futures and stuff. But you had to realize then, back in 2000, you weren't really trading minis, you were trading bigs. And it was like, you know, the, the markets were nebulous at best. Uh, so, um, you know, I just scrambled to get as many, you know, as many futures as I could. I only got maybe half of them. You know, I paid the price on Monday morning because they were, they were limit up and then whatever. But yeah, so this is the, like, this is the, one of the busiest or certainly one of the most volatile Thanksgiving weeks, I can remember. I mean, just extraordinary moves, especially today. I mean, just uh, I, I just watching them. I couldn't, like I saw NVIDIA trade down a 34, was it 34, 33? Trade down a 33 and, you know, back up to, I think trade in the 50s, right? What am I looking at? 54. I mean, what a range. 21, that's about, you know, 16% off the bottom. That's an incredible move. You know, in a couple of hours, I mean, it just really underlined the randomness with what you see this market behaving right now. And I think that's a, that's a great word to keep in the back of your head. Cause I think there's a, there's a real degree of, there's a high degree of randomness and to postulate as to where these things are going to be a week or an hour from now for that matter is probably a fool's errand, but uh, you know, you, you try to use your tools and try to stay away as, you know, you try to, if you're going to go near the fire, you want to get paid. And that's kind of the way I approach these things. You know, I just think uh, I, I had done some. Oh, you, you want to talk about some? What we, what, you, you ask me some questions. I'll give you some answers if I have. God, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, well, no, I'd, I'd just say no. I like where you're going, and I'd say let's take a look at. Is there anything that sticks out at you? I mean, there have been some big, uh, you know, earnings plays, whether it be Target today, uh, Nvidia. I mean, Nvidia. We were looking at it. It was two hundred dollars, and we were taking a look at the two hundred dollars straddle. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, Nvidia is trading. A, oh my gosh, actually had a big rebound. It's trading one forty nine ninety. It was trading one. 133 first thing this morning yeah i mean it's just amazing like i said it was 133 up to 154 i mean this is a 16 percent move i mean this, is, this isn't you know some random bio talk awaiting fda awaiting fda approval the moves are extraordinary they're severe they're going to the greatest pain whatever that is at that particular point in time uh twillow i mean here's another way I, I traded this thing i told you i butchered it at every freaking turn i mean that thing traded 90 was it two weeks ago with 97 dollars off earnings and trade it down through 72 today. I mean, you know, hands are weak at best. you got a market here, I guess, of nerve, you know, panicked longs and nervous shorts, I guess, because the, the moves are just so, everything is so exaggerated and you know, there's heightened levels of uh, emotion. And this, you know, look, as much as we want to talk about bots and stuff like that and algorithmic trading and high frequency guys, the market still, the market is still ruled by fear and greed. It's still it's still about emotion. And at the apex in, in markets or indices, uh, there's there's no fear and there's tons of greed because I want to, I'm a buy rider. It's eight volatility in SPX. And, at, you know, at the, at the trough, at the bottom, there's just fear. And, and it's, a guy told me, and Larry will remember this, a guy told me that calls are a function of greed and puts are a function of need. And if, if that definitely rings true with these last uh, six weeks. Because when you need puts, you'll pay any price to get them. So that's why I would think that uh, you know going forward, um, this is you know, we haven't seen the last of the upticks. <laughs> I'll say that uh, going forward, if you get a chance to buy protection cheap, you buy puts cheap. You just got to own them, own them, and put them away. 
you know, and then the same thing, if you get, you know, if you get a chance to buy calls cheap, I think it's supposed to buy. And then and the converse on the, on the flip side. So what I'm looking at now is, yeah, I did a couple yeah, so of let's trades. Take a look at a few that aren't necessarily earnings related. It's just volatility related based on what we've been going through uh, recently. Sure. And yeah, go sure. through what you uh, did today. Sorry to interrupt you on that. No, 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 no. That's fine. I, I put a few trades in the chat the last couple of weeks. Uh, the last couple of days. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm dead wrong. I thought we, we would uh, rally. I was looking for a rally here. I mean, I don't have a position in SPX. I had some garbage put spreads that went out worthless last week. I got some small calendars that are working today uh, that actually worked fairly well today. But I, I don't have a hard stock and option position there. I got some, I, I've got some uh, soft volatility spreads, if you will, you know, with a directional bias that, you know, that I got paid. That I got paid on today. Like I said, I had put spreads that went out worthless last week, but that's not the you know there. So I don't really have a like I want to I want to bet up in the spiders, but I've been I've been consumed with other stuff. I think there's a way to play this thing, and I've been playing it. I'm shorting. I sold uh, Procta last week. I guess I'll tell you exactly where I sold. I sold it on average of ninety three. Where are we here? Ninety three eighty and ninety three ninety. I'm just trying to think. Uh, my average short was nine. I'm sorry, 93 spot 50. So I'm short. I'm short 93 spot 50 stock in Procter. I've been buying. I bought like the. Uh, I'll put this up for you. How do you like that? P G. Um, what do I do? I bought this call spread. What I'm trying to do is here. Like you look up here. I mean, this is a big thing to me. Right? You know, our volatility is elevated everywhere, everywhere, and rightfully so. But I mean, now what you're seeing in Procter, which would be counter to what you're seeing in the indices, or obviously some of these, some of these tech stocks that are taking on the chin today, Procter, because it's had this enormous rally, you've got contango in the uh, volatility curve. Like you see, like I'm looking at, they're pretty, they're pretty much the same volatility from next week, 17.3, all the way through Jan, as you see it, as I underline these things, right? Pretty much that after money stuff right around 17, it was 17 in a year. But then we got out into April, April earnings and stuff like that, Feb and April. Vol's a little bit elevated, you know, maybe 10% higher than, maybe 9% higher than where, 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 say, Jan currently resides. So I've been looking to defray my, or hedge some of my short exposure, my short deltas in the stock by buying this call spread. I've, I've been buying the uh, Jan 95s. I'm buying these Jan 95s. They're like about a dollar, what, a dollar 57 right now, and selling the April pars. Uh, so about 13 cents. I think I paid uh, 15 cents or 16 cents. And that actually worked because I bought that last week. And then, you know, we had the, the stock drifted lower now. So now, now the contango is somewhat shrinking in between those two months of the spread string. I was selling that spread at about two volatility clicks. So, that, so I'm trying to win both ways. I'm trying to win on direction in the stock. And, I'm, and, and I try to select the hedge. And this is important. I mean, I, I'm not, I just don't slap a hedge on willy-nilly and say, okay, now I got some protection. I want to put it on where I think that the hedge in and of itself may be a profitable trade. You know what I'm saying? It's backed by sound theory. It's backed by sound option, you know, strategy and stuff like that, volatility strategy. Where, where How can I structure a hedge that would... It's the cheapest way to put it on. It's going to give me the protection I need to protect either a long position or, in this case, a short position. And on a standalone basis, it works. If where I can take in what I think might 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 be some decent skew. So, you know that you know, that worked. And I bought the spread here, maybe maybe a dollar higher. The spread's trading about eleven or twelve cents. I paid fifteen or fourteen. Small delta, and I bought some others. I I just think that if and when the market turns. Now, I didn't think we were going to be trading 2630 today, obviously. I'll, full disclosure, wrong. Uh, if and when it turns, I think the proctors, the places where the money's been hiding, are just going to get flushed out. I mean, proctors had an enormous move from 82. I could see it revisit that area again. You know, and I, 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 I just say this from trading. I was a market maker in Kimberly Clark back in the day, KMB, ticker symbol KMB. And I just know, like, you know, these things are 14 vol, 15 vol for a while till you get that outlier move, and there are no bids. When, when the money flushes out and all of a sudden Facebook isn't an ESMA anymore and Apple isn't rotten to the core. See what I did there, Mike? Oh, uh, I like Apple, that. Right? You like that, huh? <laughs> Apple isn't rotten to the core anymore. You know, they'll they'll flush out of these stocks at PGs and Express. So I think, you know, in a crazy, whacked out way, and I think you understand what I'm saying here, it is a way, it is a, 
cheap way to play the long side. It's sort of a proxy for a long bet by being short Proctor. And then I had a good trade here in AXP. I sold AXP. I mean, another one where, I mean, and the only reason I sold it, I mean, I, I want to shout out to one of the guys in the chat. I don't know if it was Gabe. I think it was Gabe B. Last Monday, uh, he was looking at it at 107-ish. Um, thinking of making it a 104. And, like, I, I came up with something and I forgot about it. Put it, you know, I didn't do anything. All of a sudden, it's Thursday or Friday and the stock's running. Stock's trading 110. And I think I wound up selling that. I shorted that thing at uh, – I think 109.90 on average. I mean, a real nice sales. So, and then and I bought I bought some December 95s against it. I bought some December or these December regular weight deck 95s. I'm sorry, the regular weight deck 110s. I'm still in Procter. I paid about two dollars. It was kind of I paid about two fifty for these calls. See, they trade about a dollar thirty five. These are the December ones. Hold on one second. Did I buy the Did I buy the December? I bought the jam. I might have bought the jam. I'm sorry. I did buy the deck 110s. Okay. I put the deck 110s, play 250. Okay. Against 109.90 stock. So I, I, I did it with a uh, small short. Uh, I'm just trying to think. The delta on the things, I think it's about a 40. So I might have bought two of those against short. You know, I, I might have bought, say, 20 of those against short 1,000 shares of stock. Something like that. So, you know, short 200 deltas every every 20 lot by uh, 1,000 lot I did. So I did that. And then yesterday, I get, I get, I get lucky because I get the move. Pressing down, now I can sell. Now he, I'm selling these. I, I wind up selling these puts yesterday. I think I sold these at like 81 cents. The next week's uh, November 30, 105 puts. I think I sold these at 81. I think I sold these at like 71 or 72. Whatever. I mean, the home run closed for me here. Now, why do I sell those? I didn't pick those strikes up out of the sky. I picked them out because I was long deck vol, probably at around 20 volatility when I put this on Friday. Yeah, it's currently trading 22. Now, it was obviously a bit lower yesterday. But then we you know when I you know, when I can sell yesterday, I'm selling that front that front loaded thing for November 30. We, we was gonna lose a day and probably a day and a half with the holiday. I was selling that at 22. I can take into like sort of the absolute sort not sort of it is the inverse of what I did in uh, in Proctor, where in Proctor the vol curve was in contango, right? Nearer tenors are uh, cheaper on a vol basis versus longer dated stuff. And here the op the op the opposite was true. It's sort of in back, it was in backwardation because you had a hard move in an express. And an express typically doesn't move two percent in a day, right? We know that. So when you when you got that hard move, yes, I was able to sell these puts. Now, yeah, I'm underwater on them, but for me, the home run closed for me, Mike, as we know. If I'm on the one ten call short stock, I'm on the one ten calls in December, I'm short stock, I'm sure the 05 and 06 puts. I mean. Home run close to me is like 105, 106, right? Puts go out worthless to stock. You know, I make four bucks on being, you know, four or five dollars being short the stock. So that's why I sell those. And it's also the midpoint of this recent move from, I think it was like par, give or take, up to 110. So I think, I think on that basis, the uh, stock might be worth a, worth a, you know, it might be worth a look at the 105 level. I know it's traded like 105.80 this morning or something, 105.50. So that's what I did there. Uh, Apple, I've been doing these one by twos and losing, but I mean, I'm losing nominal amounts. Um, I did a par 05 call spread one by two in here. I think it wound up paying, I'm going to say 18 cents on average. It's a rip up. Uh, this thing is that thing. That's a rip up. Uh, then yesterday, obviously way too soon, bought the 0207 one by two. I think I paid a nickel. I mean, you got to think about the, you know, you, it's important that we stress to the uh, to the membership what I'm risking here. I mean, I, I think Apple can go higher. I thought that obviously I thought it ten dollars ago, so obviously my thought was incorrect. But I bought the two hundred two two hundred seven two hundred two and a half two hundred seven expiring next week. I think I paid a nick. I paid all four on average, right? Currently available at uh, you know it's it's it, it, yeah it even so I'm out four cents. Big deal. Who cares? I mean, when I put these on, I try to go as far away from the strike as possible. I now, now yesterday at the time when I did, I think the low might have been the low I was working with was 186. Then I'm looking at 233, 47, 23, 09 on the top side in the stock, 209 on the top side. Because I'm just I do not want to get burned if and when this thing turns. Because right now, when I have this on, I'm praying for a rally and I don't want to be in the position of having these one by twos on. I don't want to be in the position of having to pray for a sell-off if, if and when I do get the rally. You follow me? Because, you, you, you know, you've been there with Larry. You know the way the game is. They always go 
they always go further than you think they're going to go. So I try to get, stay as far away as possible. I want to use my technical benchmarks. And the reason I did, I didn't do it because the stock's going to go to two go to 209 or 207 or whatever the heck I might go to. I did it because the volatility is very high. Look what I'm doing. This is 38, 39 volatility in Apple. These are, this thing here, I mean, across the board trading 30 plus. Okay. Now I'm going to say it's been about 22 with some outliers here over the last, yeah, 52. Look at that, Mike. Huh? You think I'm making this stuff up as I go along. The 32 week median, median been about 22 in Apple. So, I mean, you're, 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 you're a couple standard deviations off the, off the, you know, from the mean right here. So this is where I want to be a seller of volatile. I want to be a seller of options here. Now, I'm doing it in calls. I'll never do it in puts. I wouldn't do it in puts in my own account. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't give it, I wouldn't tell other people to do it. I wouldn't, any spread I give, I do myself. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell somebody, somebody to do something that I wouldn't do myself. I wouldn't put my own money on the one. So I'll do it in the calls because obviously there's always, there's always a seller of stock at some spot. There might not be a buyer, you know what I'm saying? As we, as we all know, until they black hole it. But this is what I'm saying. This is a volatility play. I could pay four cents for it. Great. If I do 50 of those, it's going to cost me $200. And that's going you know, to, I'd like to think I can come back from that. Now, now I'm, I'm also, as we speak, I'm bidding for the, uh, I'm going out here, here. Now I'm rolling out to, the, I'm, I'm incorrigible at times, Mike. You got to understand that. I am half Irish, so it's stubborn. Being stubborn runs in my blood. Um, I'm trying to buy the Deck 07. This is a Christmas tree, Mike. You want to quiz me on this? I want to buy the 97 halves. This yeah, is December take me through a up. Christmas tree setup. And and it's apt because we are entering the holiday season. Hmm. Okay, so I'm buying the 97 and a halves. I'll say the 97. We'll just keep, we'll keep it simple. I'll buy the 97 halves. The vial's trading 35 here. Uh, I'll buy one to buy the 97 halves. I want to sell the 202 halves. And I want to sell the 207 hands. And I am bidding a dime for that. Okay. I want to bid a dime for that. Now, let's pretend you're, what's, what are my break evens on that thing? In, and, you know, you, you do a great exercise. I think you called me out on this when we did a uh, Netflix spread. And right. You're Netflix right. at 400 bucks. <laughs> at 400 bucks. Yeah. And hey, I gave a remember, similar. Remember, it, it turned, it, it came out, earnings was, it was like 340. It traded that night, that day up to like 405, 410 maybe. And it, this morning it traded 250. And that you're was only like three right. weeks ago. <laughs> you're 100% right. It did trade. It traded 400. You're absolutely right. Here. Um, Apple, 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 Apple. Okay, here. Let's say I do this. Um, bu, 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 what am I saying? I want to buy the 97 halves. I want to sell the two halves. Uh, I want to sell the 07 halves. Now you can look at this without me. Now it's 10 bit of 14 as we speak. I'll show you profile what this trade looks like. Uh, let me get this over here. I'll move this here. See if you can see that. Okay. That's today's day. I want to look, how, how do I look in a week? All right. And that's good. Cause you, you don't want to get, you don't want to get trapped into looking at things at expiration because options are very much a game of horseshoes and hand grenades. No one, no one is looking to, I'm not buying a call thinking it's, I'm going to pay a dollar and I'm going to sell it at $2. I'm not buying the, the 197 and a half calls an apple at 80 cents because the because the stock's going to trade 199. I don't care about that. I just want it to, you know, if I get any type of up move, that spread's going to appreciate and volatility is going to come in. You know, the volatility, you know, vol is a mean reverting game. Apple vol will probably revert to that mean. You know, the mean is somewhere around 20, but I mean, right now it's it, it's heightened. Right now, I mean, there's some pain here. So, I mean, right now, I think you want to, you can play, you, you can take cheap upside looks. So, here, I, I want to look out a week. All right, this is today's the 20th. I want to look at the 27th. Uh, Let's look at a five percent move. Now, if I did this thing, how much? This is a, this is a one lot, okay? I got room here on the twenty seventh between one seventy nine eighty, and I don't think I turned down until about about one ninety nine. This is uh, yeah, one ninety nine. So I got plenty of room here out the next week, okay? I got room to one ninety nine. Now, look, what's going to happen if we if we get to if I'm lucky enough to get this thing to one ninety seven in the next week? I mean that's a home run. I'm probably gone, but let's let's be more realistic. Let's look see how we look on December first. On December first, my break evens are you know my my break evens are a little bit greater. They're going to be um, 
I got room up to about one, the same spot to 199, and, I, and I'm profitable of 181. So this thing here has got plenty of upside and plenty of room. And that's the way when you structure these things, you want to think of like, oh, I like it, you know, but I, you can't be that exact and say it's going to go, it's going to go to 205 and stop because it very, very rarely happens that way. All I want to do is get this thing moving in my way. If I can pay a dime for this thing, look, if I get 5% out of the stock, if I pay, you know, if, if I pay a dime for it, you know, look what I mean. I can, I, I can make, you know, I can make two X on a 5% up move. Stand. What am I, I'm not risking anything. These are the kind of, you know, low risk upside, upside spreads that are, you can avail yourself of right now in Apple when you got a lot of leverage in this thing, if this thing turns around. Look, and if we go down to 165, okay, you lost a dime. It's not the end of the world. You come back and fight another day. But this is what this is what's presenting itself right here. Like you know, it's sort of the converse of what I did in American Express and PG. PG, I'm a seller of stock and I'm a buyer of upside calls. Now, every pro will tell you, if I'm a call buyer, I'm bearish. I'm a put buyer, I'm bullish. Call buyers, I buy upside calls. You watch Larry. What is he? If he if he wants to go home with a short S and P position, what's he buying? Is he buying? Is he selling downside puts or is he buying upside calls? I, I would bet dollars to donuts he's buying upside calls for protection. He's bearish. He wants the stock to move away from his longs from his long options. So when I buy calls, I'm a stock seller. When I buy puts, I'm a stock buyer. I, when I if I'm a, you know I, I want to buy puts that are out of the money. And long stock against a long stock, right? I want the stock to move away from my strike. Same thing with the, and the converse is true on with calls. With calls, I want to buy calls and set, get on top of the stock. And they say on calls, you want to get on top of the stock. With puts, you want to get underneath the stock. Follow me? Yeah. So long calls above the stock, the seller of stock. So Express, I bought, you know, I, I thought I bought cheap volatility on a stock that it was what I thought was stretched at 110. What the heck it got to on, on Friday? You know, 110 and change. I bought cheap volatility. Now I can sell the downside. Now I can sell the downside put. So what I wind up with in there is essentially a kind of a diagonal calendar, you know, a diagonal put spread, right? Essentially, the long December 110s against short stock are December 110 puts. Synthetically, that's what they are, right? Long call short stock equals long put. And then I can sell, the, I can sell two weeks out, November 30th, 05 and 06 puts. Now I got a game. Now, if I'm lucky enough to have this stock closed in here, five and six, okay, so I get assigned on on the sixes. Big deal. I'm still short. But the fives go out worthless. I mean, the sixes, I, mean, I sold them for 80 cents. I'm still going to make money net net selling that thing. I'm just, I, I'm taking it now. I'm lucky enough to take in theta. You know, I'm getting theoretical amortization on the front on the near dated options. And I still got the game out in December where I could trade around it. Like, I think the stock may trade out at 105. Maybe I'll get a chance to sell it out again above 10, you know, above 108, 109. I mean, it was 110 on Friday. So, you know, the distance and where you want to buy or sell these things isn't that far anymore, especially in light of what's happening. You know, so I think there's, I think you got to, you know, when you start to look, take it, you like some of these tech stocks, I'll put some more in the chat. I'm looking at Facebook. You like some of these check, these text, these tech stocks. Now is the time to look to do one by twos, to do ratios, to do Christmas trees. You want to give yourself that, you want to take advantage of the volatility. It's giving you a chance so to is sell it. Is it better when to do those ratios when it's higher vol or when it's lower vol? Higher vol. First of all, the debit's going to be cheaper because what's happening is everything's expensive. Right. So if you're doing 20 vol in something, well, one one's a dollar and one's 40 cents. But when it's 30 vol, one's a dollar 30 and the other one is 60 cents. Well, one went up, the, one, the dollar one went up 30 cents, but you can sell two of the other ones at 60 cents, right? You make 40 cents on that. So you're up a dime. So if, if yeah, when, when higher vol, you want to do ratios and trees. You want to be a net seller of options because you're getting paid. Like if you go back, back to the summer, ancient history, I was advocating buying put trees in spiders because the stuff was in the dirt. IVs were in the dirt out to November. I mean, just tossing stuff. Now that 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 game is kind of gone for absolute, re you know, for obvious reasons. Tail risk is back, or it's perceived to be back. Uh, so people are bidding this stuff up. So I would look to fashion spreads. If I was going to do stuff in puts with ratios, I would always have something underneath, just some garbage thing to throw out to cap my loss. Because that's the way I would do it with my own money, and that's the way I would advocate others doing it. I'm not going to give somebody a strategy that I would do with my that I would advocate for my for myself. That wouldn't be fair. That would be hypocritical. All right, uh, we actually got to wrap it up a little early today, but uh, a lot of great information. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, very volatile market out there. S and P is back to down two percent. Uh, Nasdaq's down two percent, and crude oil 
uh, at the low of the day. Uh, the low is now 52.77. We're trading down 7.5%. We're trading a 53 the figure right now. Uh, so very active on the energy side. But Tom McEntee, I appreciate it. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving. We'll uh, talk to you uh, after Thanksgiving. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to, to everybody, to, to you and your family, to Lowry, everybody. Have a great, uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy the games. Absolutely. And we'll, talk, we'll talk soon. Sounds okay, good. buddy. Thanks, take care. Tom.